Hello and welcome to the Thursday, January 26, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. It looks like the Cisco WebEx plugin issue will stick with us for a little bit longer. First of all, Cisco released an updated bulletin including Firefox and Internet Explorer in the list of vulnerable browsers. So it's not just Google Chrome. Somewhat expected given the nature of the flaw. It wasn't specific really to Chrome, but more to the way that this plugin works. Second, Travis Ormandy from Google did state that they found additional remote code execution vulnerabilities in the plugin. Now, there are no details known yet about these vulnerabilities. They have reported them to Cisco. So hopefully Cisco will release updates soon. If you are relying on WebEx and uh, if that's your remote communication suite of choice, you probably use it several times a day. There isn't really much you can do at this point other than possibly disabling the plugin if you're not actively using it. That may help here or just uh, use one browser with the plugin installed for your video conferencing needs and uh, then set up a second browser for all of your other browsing. But just to be clear, the big deal here was that there was an exploit available for this vulnerability. That vulnerability has been fixed. The other vulnerabilities, there is at least no public exploit at this point. So you may have a little bit of time to wait for Cisco to come up with a patch. And Xavier wrote up a malicious SVG file that he found in the wild. Now, SVG are images that distinguish themselves by being vector-based. So this way they nicely scale. SVG stands for scalable vector graphic. In addition to just having sort of expressions for lines and circles and the like, you may also embed JavaScript in these images in order to modify these SVG images on the fly. Of course, this can be abused and that's what these malicious files uh, took advantage of. It essentially included a simple JavaScript downloader to get the user to download and then execute an executable Windows file. Now, Xavier wasn't able to get a hold of uh, that particular file, just uh, the SVG file that actually then triggers the download. Now, Antivirus is detecting some of uh, these malicious SVG files. Just make sure that, they, that you're actually scanning them. Uh, some antivirus configurations do not scan SVG files because you consider them images, not executable code. So as a result, they may skip past your defenses. This time of the year, a lot of companies in the US are getting ready to provide their employees with tax documents that they need to file their annual taxes. Well, last year we had a huge wave of phishing attempts that tricked accountants into releasing these documents to malicious individuals. And of course, these documents have a lot of personal information in them and can also be used to then fraudulently retrieve a tax rate refund. Turns out that uh, these fraud attempts are starting up again. Apparently, a school district in Texas uh, fell for this and did release these W-2 documents uh, to an unknown attacker. So be aware and uh, probably a good idea to remind your accountants and such about uh, this problem. And Uber's website, or better, a web service associated with Uber's website uh, was susceptible to an XML external entity vulnerability. This class of vulnerabilities I've mentioned a couple times before. If you are writing code for web services, if you are a pen tester, this is something that you really have to become familiar with because I'm seeing more and more issues with that. If you are writing web services using XML, essentially an attacker can retrieve arbitrary files with this vulnerability and uh, as such, of course, leak data from the web service bypassing standard access control. 
So go ahead, uh, read the write-up about this particular vulnerability. It's uh, reasonably detailed, so you should be able to learn more about how to identify this vulnerability and also how to prevent it. And Mozilla released a new version of Firefox. We are now up to version 51. Aside from fixing some vulnerabilities, this is also a version that will get tighter on HTTPS. SHA-1 sign certificates are now no longer good. And probably more importantly, sort of for the average user, any password field on a non-HTTPS page is going to be pointed out as insecure. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to vote for us in the Security Blogger Network poll for RSA and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.